Good day to you. Today we are going to talk about the last chapter of the Bible. Now you may wonder what I am talking about. Is there a chapter that is lost in the Bible? There are 1189 chapters in the Bible. None of those chapters is lost. The reason why I call Luke chapter 15 as the lost chapter is because in that chapter Jesus shares three parables parables of things that were lost in the first parable a sheep is lost in the second parable a coin is lost and in the third parable a son is lost the famous story of the prodigal son is the third story so my dear friends today we are going to study about Luke chapter 15 and as to why Jesus would share about three lost elements. What did he really mean? You know, many people think that uh, Jesus talks about the lost people, lost souls, those who are yet to be saved. And uh, to talk about them, he shares a parable and then he reinforces the same story and the principles therein with the second and the third parables. But that's not correct, my dear friends. Today I'm going to explain to you that Jesus is talking about three aspects of being lost. In the parable number one, the lost person is yet to be saved as we all understand, as we all believe. And in parable number two, it's not the unsaved Christian Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about somebody who is in the church, who is actually saved and lost. And then when we go to parable number three, we are not only uh, aware of uh, the younger son, the prodigal son who was lost, but also I'm going to talk about the older son who lost something. Okay. So let's see what uh, happens in Luke chapter 15. Now I'm going to read the whole chapter for you, segment by segment as we ponder through the parables of Jesus. So Luke chapter 15, my dear friends, starting from verse 1, and I'm using the lovely version of English that I use, the King James Version. For some people, it's very difficult that, because it's an old English. But as far as I'm concerned, out of the many hundreds of English translations, versions of the Bible, the 1611 King James Version is the best, not only for the richness of its lingo, the language, but also uh, the faithfulness uh, the, the translators have attempted to maintain uh, in, in faithful to the original Hebrew and the Greek. I'm not saying that the King James Version is 100% accurate in its translation, but I would say that is the best of all the translations that we have. Okay, my dear friends, Luke chapter 15, verse 1 onwards. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, Now the first parable is in response to the Pharisees and those who accused Jesus of eating with the sinners. What man of you Having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Verse 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just, just persons which need no repenter. A parable is not a true story. Parabole, the two Greek words, say or show that a story that is told to bring out a truth. The story itself is not necessarily true because in this story 
the scenario transpires in the wilderness and uh, what sort of a shepherd would leave 99 uh, sheep in the wilderness just to roam about until he goes and finds that lost sheep. So this is a parable but there is a spiritual truth in this. Now this parable was shown in order to talk about the, the sinners who are yet to be found. But in this parable the sinners are just one of hundred. In the world it's the other way around, right? We Christians are a small minority and the non-Christians who are yet to be saved are in the great and vast majority. So this, trap, uh, this parable is not talking about the reality in terms of the percentage of who are yet to be saved and those who are saved. But it talks about the love of God as a shepherd. Because here they see Jesus going and talking to the sinners, eating with them, showing his love to them. And the Pharisees and the others who were self-righteous, they expected Jesus to always talk to them and to eat with them and to have communion with them. But when Jesus was going and talking to the uh, sinners, they were so perturbed and they were murmuring. They were like, uh, why would Jesus do that? And Jesus is saying, come on, I am a good shepherd. Now in, in some other places, especially in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And Jesus here takes the form of a shepherd in this parable. And he says that one, what man of you, one of you had hundred sheep. And if one is lost, would you not leave the 99 and go behind the lost? Now Jesus is actually talking about the love of the shepherd. The true shepherd would lay down his life for the sheep. And Jesus is saying, I have not come for the found sheep. I have come for the lost sheep. I came to seek and save the lost, to seek and save the sinners. They are my target. I have come to fetch them out of their quagmire, out of their sinful life into Christianity, the kingdom of God. Now, my dear friends, in this parable, the lost sheep is lost, not inside the church, but outside. Not inside the kingdom of God, but outside. This does not talk about those who are in the kingdom of God, who are in the church, but those who are outside the church and outside the kingdom of God who need the gospel to be preached. And Jesus has chosen his people to go and share the gospel to those people to bring them in. Now I was one of them because I was not a Christian. You know, many of you know my testimony. I was a Hindu and I was worshipping the creation instead of the creator. I was that lost sheep and God sent somebody and through some means he found me. I didn't find Jesus, Jesus found me. And for those of you Christians, I'll tell you, you never found Jesus, Jesus found you. He, he loves you so much that he came behind you. Maybe through a tract, maybe through a sermon, maybe through a song, maybe through somebody who preached the gospel to you. The gospel came to you, you did not go behind the gospel seeking to be saved. And we are, or we were, the lost sheep and now we are found and the Bible says Jesus says and when that sheep is found the shepherd goes to his friends and he says look one of my sheep got lost but I found and come and join with my rejoice and in verse 7 he says likewise for one sinner's repentance there will be great joy in heaven now I want to clearly explain this to you my dear friends when we got saved, for example, when I got saved way back in 1979, do you think that the heaven rejoiced only that one day? No. The heaven rejoices every day for my salvation. The day you got saved, heaven rejoiced. But the heaven did not just rejoice for that one day. The heaven rejoices for your salvation from the day you got saved to this day. There is joy in heaven, rejoicing in heaven every day for your salvation. Every day for my salvation. And for those of you who feel that you are insignificant, you are nothing, 
because of reasons best known to you i'll tell you you are such an important person in the lord that you are bringing joy to heaven every day you know many people misinterpret this scripture you know they think they think uh, uh, that you know there's joy in heaven only the day they got saved do you think the lord is not interested in you do you think the lord, the shepherd was not interested in that one sheep come on he left behind 99 sheep to go and find that one sheep and is he going to be just happy that he found it only the day he found it no he is going to every time he looks at the sheep the bible says that the sheep the shepherd knows his sheep by their names and our good shepherd jesus is the good shepherd and he knows all of us by our name and he every time he looks at us he rejoices and the angelic hosts in heaven rejoices because of our salvation and the devil wants to lie to us the devil wants to show us that we are nothing but a worm we are nothing but insignificant people and look at others look at the other christians they are more tal- talented come on they are more than i more than you there are talented people in in christianity educated people in christianity and good people in christianity of course obviously there are christians who pray more than i pray who read the word more than i do who commit their lives to god more than i have committed who toil and serve the lord more than i toil and serve and i'll tell you i'm not the best in the kingdom of god and neither are you but does it matter no because we are part of the best so the devil wants to come and tell us that we are nothing but the but a worm alone oh, i'm nothing i don't have talents i don't know to sing i don't know to worship i don't know to share the gospel i don't know to preach it doesn't matter what you don't know but you are so important that you were found by jesus over and above all those already found and he rejoices every day over him finding you and not only that the whole heaven is happy that you are in christianity so that's parable number 1 talking about the get to be saved people and my dear friends if you if you join the host of evangelists to go and preach the gospel to the yet to be saved lost individuals i tell you you are bringing joy to christianity you are bringing joy to the kingdom of god you are bringing joy to heaven now let's talk about the second parable very interesting verse 8 luke chapter 15 where was eight onwards either what woman having 10 pieces of silver if she lose one piece that not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it and when she had found it she called her friends and her neighbors together saying rejoice with me for i have found the piece which i had lost likewise I say unto you there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. My dear friends, here verse 10 talks similarly about the joy in heaven of the found sinner. But this is not a reinforcement of the foregone parable. This parable does not confirm the previous parable this is a different story altogether why the story happens within four walls it happens inside the coin is one of 10 not one of 100 whereas the sheep was one of 100 okay now it is coming it's narrowing down it's narrowing down from 100 to just ten in that parable one of 100 got lost in this parable one of 10 gets lost 10 what 
coins. And where is this losing happen? Inside the house. In parable number one, the sheep was lost, lost outside and was found and brought inside. And in parable number two, the coin is lost inside the house. So this is not talking about those who are not saved. This is talking about the saved Christians who are lost inside the kingdom of God, inside the church. Now you may ask, is it possible? Yes, it is possible. There are so many Christians who are backslidden in their lives. They, only they and God know that they are backslidden. The, the others wouldn't know, the husband wouldn't know, the wife wouldn't know, the parents wouldn't know, the children wouldn't know, the pastor wouldn't know. Why? Because these backslidden people, they will come to church, they will read the word, they will pray, they will sing, they will worship. Why? They would even serve the Lord. Sometimes they would even preach. But only they and God know that they are far from God. They are lost. Now, my dear friends, if you are watching this from wherever in the world, you know whether you are standing okay with the Lord or whether you are backslidden in your house. There are two kinds of backsliding. In another teaching of mine, I'm talking about the two kinds of backsliding. Backsliding, number one, is obvious. Everybody knows that this person is backslidden and the person doesn't come to church, doesn't pray, doesn't uh, worry about God obvious backsliding but the secret kind of dangerous backsliding is when the person is st st still in the church doing all the things that uh, an average Christian would do but in the hearts backslidden so my dear friends you could be one of those people who are backslidden in your heart now how do we know that whether we are backslidden or not look at this parable it goes on to say that this woman looks for the lost coin by lighting a candle and sweeping the house. Two things are happening. Two things are happening to rediscover or to find the lost coin. Number one, lighting the candle. Number two, sweeping the house. Lighting the candle. Doesn't the Bible say that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path? And here, the light is uh, 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 a symbol for the word of God. And the woman finds the coin by lighting the candle. So those who are lost in the church, those who are lost in the kingdom of God, can be rediscovered or found only through the word of God. And number two, she was sweeping the house, cleansing, holiness. You know, many Christians who don't live a holy life, who have all sort of, sorts of sin in their lives, but in the external, they are holy, right? Lift up holy hands, they say. They, 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 they worship with loud voice, sing loud, everything. But if they have sins that remove them from the word of God, then they are backslidden. My dear friends, the backslidden Christian is not a Christian who lives according to the word. That way you would know whether you are a backslidden Christian or not. You know, the Bible carrying Christian is not a good Christian. The Christian who is carried by the Bible is the good Christian. The one who carries the word, word of God is not the Christian. The one who is carried by the word of God is the Christian. The one who lifts the Bible up is not the good Christian. The one who stands on the word is the good Christian. So my dear friends, if you are a person who lives according to the word of God, then you are a non-backslidden Christian. If not, you are a backslidden Christian. You know what? People can worship, people can sing, people can listen to wonderful sermons, people can perform People can do this, that and the other. But those who live according to the word of God are the Christians who are genuinely there. You know what? Look at that woman. If that woman wants to go 
shopping and she needs money all she can do is with the nine coins that she has even though she has that tenth coin in the house since the coin is lost she would not be able to use that coin on the same token we may be in the church but if we don't live according to the word of god we are lost christians and if we are lost christians god cannot use us although we may perform those would be mere performances but for god to use us in a genuine sense we need to be people living according to the word of god and living a holy clean life now my dear friends if one of you is there who is backslidden in your heart and uh, you are saying well i'm nothing uh, i'm going to church i'm praying i'm singing i'm worshiping but i feel dry i feel uh, god is not listening to my prayers and i feel god is not talking to me if you feel that you are backslidden there are two things that you need to do today my dear friends tell god forgive me lord for not living according to your word you know but the bible says in hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 my people perish for the lack of knowledge you know people have miracles in their lives people have signs and wonders in their lives but if they don't have the word of god they will definitely backslide and you tell the lord lord from today i will live according to your word and number 2 you the, the second thing that you have to do is to get down on your knees and tell the lord list give the list of all those unclean things that you have the the unclean things in your words in your deeds and in your thoughts and sweep sweep your life just like that woman does in that story sweep and when the light comes back to our life the word of god comes back to our life and when the cleansing happens then the lost coin is found and once the lost coin is found then that coin can be used just like the other nine so through uh, through the two parables we have learned in parable number 1 that the lost sheep is those who are yet to be saved and in parable number 2 those who are saved and yet who are lost in the church now we have a another kind of lost people when we come to the story of the prodigal son you may have heard so many preachings sermons from the story of the prodigal son and therefore i don't need to preach the peripherals but i will share along the lines of what we are discussing okay let's read from verse 11 and he said jesus said now this is the third parable a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided the unto them his living now usually in the jewish context the wealth is given to the sons only after the son, dad dies but in this story the young son comes and asks the father to give his portion again parable this doesn't happen usually but this is a parable and uh, not many many days later after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living he goes and spends all the money all the goodies and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land and he began to be in want and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him to his fields to feed swine this big son of a huge land owner a rich person having spent all the money is now looking after pigs in a foreign land and he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him you know what the pigs eat don't you the pig feed are the useless good for nothing food no human would want to eat such a nasty food but this fellow himself eating that food 
And when he came to himself, he said, in other words, he came to his senses. How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. So he decides, I'm going to go back. The only place where I can eat and live is my father's place. But I no longer am worthy to be called a son. So I'm going to go and tell my father, Dad, don't treat me as a son. Let me be like a servant here. He's now leaving to go back to his father. But... When he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Imagine the son would be stinking like nothing because he was with swine all these days. He's coming from a land of land of famine. He was dirty, sweating, tired, dusty, rusty, nasty and smelly stinky and yet the father's love he saw the son from afar off and he runs to his son and he just embraces him and the son said unto him father i have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son he's parent he's a father i'm no longer worthy to be called your son but the father did not even listen to his son but the father said to his servants, even the father didn't even reply to the son. He turns and looks at the servants. Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Wow. And bring hither the fattened calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. The father is so happy that the son has come back. For this my son was dead and is alive again, and he was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Can you see the father's heart here? My dear friends, in another teaching of mine, I'm talking about the five Greek words uh, denoting the son or the child. Now, I don't have time, and I, it is not contextually correct to talk about that now. Brephos, Paedia, Napios, Technon and Huyos. In that, I'm explaining that a Brephos child or a Pioneer child or a Napios child or a Technon child is not the heir to the father's wealth. But the Huyos son is the heir to the father's wealth. And Jesus is the Huyos of the father, son of God. And when God adopted us into his family, he did not adopt us as Brephos, Pydia, Brephos, Pydia, Napios, and Techno, but we are adopted as Huyos, the rightful heir to the Father's will. God adopts us as the rightful heirs and co-heirs with Jesus. And if you are a Christian, you must know that you are a huyos to God, you are a son of God. Who you to the you for the Greek scholars? Okay, we are the sons of God. Okay, and here this son doesn't realize his position. He backslides and he runs away. Now, this is talking about the lost who leave the church who leave the kingdom of God and go and backslide. You must know a lot of those people. You know, once in my life too, I backslid. Even after the dramatic conversion I had in 1979, in the year 1983, I backslid. And I went away. But praise God, in 1986, I came back to the Lord. I didn't come. God chose me. He he picked me back again from the quagmire of the world. So there may be people who are backslidden and obviously backslidden, not like the ones who we saw in the second parable, 
lost inside but lost outside listen to this my dear friends in parable number one the the lost sheep are the ones who are lost outside never had come into the church they are non christians they need salvation in parable number two christians who are lost inside the church in other words they are backslidden within the church in parable number three we are talking about people who were inside and they have gone out and gotten lost so right now they are out there but they are lost and you may have some of your family members from a few, some of your uh, parishioners some of your friends who have backslidden and gone just like the younger son and they have gone and and wasted everything they have become their their, their current state might be even worse worse than the earlier state now jesus says that right if a demon leaves somebody he would go and roam about in the arid places and finding no place to rest would come back to see how the the house that i left is and when he sees the house sweet swept and clean he would go and bring seven more evil spirits and get into this house and this backslidden man's current condition would be worse than the former condition so backsliding is a very bad thing my dear friends and the devil never wants that the devil wants to see us backsliding why because when we are in the kingdom of god we are bringing joy to heaven even in our second parable we saw that when the lost coin is found that woman also rejoices with her friends and jesus says that there will be great joy in heaven when the backslidden person is found the lost coin is found the backslidden sinner in the church so my dear friends you and i are bringing joy to heaven and as much as we bring joy to heaven we are bringing sadness to the devil heaven was the place where the devil was he was happy when he was there he was an angel but what happened he became proud and he was cast down from heaven and he wanted that place to be a miserable place but the heaven is not a miserable place but my dear friends there are times when there is sadness in heaven what are the times when we are backslidden when we backslide there is sadness in heaven but when we are found it becomes a joy now no don't take me wrong don't don't uh, don't say that i'm saying that there is sadness in heaven no no there is no sadness in heaven but when we backslide it hurts the father's heart doesn't it because he loves us so much just like this father he was looking towards the direction of the, 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 the where the sun went and one day he sees the sun coming back and when we come back when the backslidden christian comes back to the kingdom of god there is joy and when that person comes the person doesn't need to feel like a servant the person doesn't feel need to feel like a worm this young son he is saying to the father i am no good to be your son i wasted everything i destroyed everything i destroyed your reputation i destroyed your wealth but the father doesn't even respond to the uh, son he says let's party because my son has come back the father treats the son as a son and when backslidden people come into the church god will treat them like sons if you are backslidden if you are finding it difficult to go to church come back my dear friends because the lord is the loving father don't worry about what the world says don't worry about what your heart says the devil wants to keep you away from the kingdom of god because the more you bring joy to the heaven you are bringing sadness to the devil and the devil doesn't want joy to be in heaven and especially when the when the heaven rejoices because of us we are a pain to satan and the satan would try his level best to make us backslide now we have seen the three lost elements number 1 the lost sheep number 2 the lost coin number 3 the lost son but now the lost son is found but there is another thing that was lost there is another guy in this third story who had lost his identity he was not lost 
He was with the father, but he had lost his identity. Let me read from verse 25. Verse 25 says, Now his elder son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard the music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked, What these things meant? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come. And thy father hath killed a fattened calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry. The older son was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. The father said, son, come. Your brother has come. We are parting. Come, you also come. Let's have fun. Verse 29. And he answering said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. I'm serving you all these years. Neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might take merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son come, was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fattened calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is thine. It was me that we should make merry and be glad. For thy, this thy brother was dead and is alive and was lost and is found. You see, this eldest son was with the father, but he never behaved as a son. He was waiting for his father to give him a kid, a kid in the sense a small lamb for him to go and have a little party with his friends. Whereas, throughout all the years, he had all the rights to get the fatling of the animals and have a party. That's why the father says, come on, whatever is mine is thine. Whatever is mine is yours. So why, why, why do you want to behave like a servant? Now, my dear friends, the fourth kind of people that I'm talking about are the ones who have lost their identity in the kingdom of God. Today, many people feel that, it, that to be holy, you need to be miserable. You know, the holy prayer is the lamenting prayer. Lord, I am nothing. I am a worm. Lift me up. Bless me. This is a miserable prayer. That's not the real prayer of a real son of God. We are sons of God. We are adopted into the kingdom of God as sons. We are no longer worms. We were worms. We were sinners. But now we are sons. And we have all the rights in the kingdom of God. And how many, how many Christians are using their sonship? Just like the older son. They are waiting for God to bless them. Bless me, they'll pray. Bless me, can I, may I, should I? But my dear friends, we must understand that we are co-heirs with Jesus. All the promises in the Bible are for us. All the blessings in the Bible are for us. And therefore, we need to receive them by faith. All the blessings of the kingdom of God belong to us. So my dear friends, I believe you understood what Luke chapter 15 is all about. The four lost elements. Number one, the lost sheep talks about those who are yet to be saved and those of us who have been found and who are in the kingdom of God. And because we are found, there is constant joy in heaven because of us. Don't think that there was joy only the day you became a Christian. But as long as you remain a Christian within Christendom, you are bringing joy and happiness to heaven and you are bringing sadness to Satan. And parable number two, the coin was not lost outside, it was lost inside. So there are people who are in the kingdom of God, in the church, and they are lost. And the only way for them to be found is by coming back to the Bible and sweep clean all the uncleanness 
that they have as according to the word of God. And in parable number three, we see the lost son who backslid and went out of his father's house. So there are those who have gone out of the kingdom of God, out of the church, obvious backsliding. And we need to pray for them. We need to pray for them and if possible, go and share the gospel back to them and ask them, bring them back to the church. But when they come, let's not behave like the older son who was frowning at these people, uh, at, at his brother. And we don't need to frown at our fellow brothers and sisters who come back to God because they share the same rights as we do in the kingdom of God because we are all sons of God. We have the rights of the son co-heirs with Jesus. We are no longer servants, although we have to serve the Lord. We are no longer servants. We are the sons of God. And I believe Luke chapter 15, the last chapter, would have given you some light to our situation, our position in the church, our position in the kingdom of God, and the need for us to seek and save the lost. May God bless you.